Today we come to the end of the book of Job, which we started since Monday. And the book of Job is an interesting one that explains human condition, our polygamy in various ways, the problem of evil, and also the honesty, the justice of God. Like Job, we have known sufferings, we have known lust, we have known anxiety, depression, and also death in many ways. We can also fit ourselves in Job's predicament, even with the pandemic going on, and many other things in life, disappointment, happening around us that we do not understand. And in the midst of all of that, where is God? That is basically what the book of Job set out to do. As I said on Monday when we started the book, just to remind all of us that the book is divided into three parts. The prologue, which includes the two tests of Job, the loss of his life, his children, and also the second test, he was struck with all kinds of sicknesses, illness. The second part of the book is uh, the three friends of Job coming to him, but they did not help with the situation. Rather, they were accusing Job that he is suffering because he has committed sin. That is the question. When the righteous people suffer, is it as a result of their sin? Or is there something more deeper that the Lord is revealing and trying to tell us? And then the last part is the restoration of Job. At the end of his suffering, and all the everything, the Lord restored him back to himself. But in the midst of all of this, Job proved to all of us and to God also that he feared more being annihilated from him. The perfect vision that all of us are yet for surpasses much more than losing the property or even being sick. You say the song, let your face shine on me. The face of God is that perfect vision. After we have labored here on earth, and if I am cut off from that perfect vision, the face of the Lord, then I may have wasted my purpose of existence. I put it to you as I put to myself, why am I here? Why am I here to see the face of the Lord? Is it because of the blessings that come from Him? Or because I really want to worship Him for Him being Himself? That is what Job is bringing us our attention to. But above all of that, the book of Job also is a pointer to Christ, the Son of God, who becomes a symbol of what Christ is, the innocent one who has undergone all of the pains and sufferings, and at the end of his public ministry, as we read in verse 10 to Philippians, God weighs him up and he is glorified. And that is what you see in Job's today. He rejoices for the Lord and has sent him, restored him back to life. And we are so blessed in our time with the revelation of Christ himself, that every day through the various celebrations, the saints, the sacraments, and through many activities and people put in our lives, God continues to unravel the mysteries of the sufferings, of the pains, and even death happening around us. We can only understand the meaning of all of that when we become like childlike, you know, those, uh, the mystery of the kingdom is not revealed to those who think they have known it all, but those who, like children, put themselves, their trust and confidence in the Lord, who continues to make meaning of our sufferings. And our things we make more meaning when united with the sufferings of Christ himself. 
And as we do every Saturday to remember the life of our Blessed Mother, we say in her, like we have the seven souls of Mary, how she carried all of the souls of her life to figure out the meaning of all of that through his son, Jesus Christ. And like Job, at the end of her life, she was also glorified. And that is the desire of every one of us seated here. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 23 and 27, One thing I desire, I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. May this be our prayer this morning, for Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.